you all from the Ecumenical Christian Center. So this evening, uh, we have two presentations again, uh, one from Dr. Arundas and another from uh, Sister Prema. So may I now hand over the time to uh, Dr. Subramani, the moderator for the first session. Over to you, sir, please. Yeah, thank you very much for this evening. Uh, as let's begin uh, this session, respected guests, good evening to everyone. We welcome you all for this evening's Zoom online meeting. I hope you are all doing well. And today's topic is healing ministry, borderless church and biblical spirituality. I would like to quote, God is a healing God. Adonai Rafeka, the Lord that heals you. In Matthew 8, 8, 17, Christ came to bear our infirmities and carry our sickness and by his stripes we are healed. Christ came to heal the broken hearted and heal all who are oppressed. Healing is God's gift to us. Healing is also progressive as well as instantaneous. It is something we receive now and in the future. Healing is God's hand but some things God has provincially given to our care and responsibility. With that quote, I'm privileged to introduce the presenter for this evening is Dr. Arul Das. He is a chaplain and a reader at a Christian Medical College and Hospital. During the last 30 years, he was serving as chaplain and also as a senior lecturer at a Christian Medical College, Venlo. And I'm privileged to say that he has completed his B.Sc., M.Sc. from Lakshmi from College of Arts and Science. That's from Scott Christian College. And I'm happy that he has completed his B.D. from UTC Bangalore. And also he holds Ph.D. in the field of New Testament from New College that is part of University of Edinburgh. And he is also a president of Association of Clinical Pastoral Education. And today's topic, as I mentioned it earlier, healing ministry, borderless church and spirituality. Uh, I'm happy and we will follow. The presentation will be for 30 minutes and 15 minutes followed for question and answers by the participants. In case anything, you are most welcome to use the chat box. Any clarification, questions related to it. Sir, now I request you to present the paper as we are eagerly waiting to hear from you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Subramani. Thank you, uh, ECC and uh, NT Scholars Group. And uh, I'm so privileged to be part of this and to share some of my thoughts uh, and uh, reflections uh, around this team, Healing Ministry, Borderless Church, and Biblical Spirituality. Uh, I'm, uh, I bring greetings to you all from the Christian Medical College, Vellur, and uh, uh, we are at the, at the middle of the COVID crisis. We are also ministering to people who are going through difficulties in this area. Now, uh, this topic is a broad one, I know. But anyhow, I'm going to share from uh, some of my experiences in CMC last uh, many years. Uh, these three sections, healing ministry, borderless church, and biblical spirituality, probably are, in, uh, I would like to handle three distinct uh, small sections, then we will try to understand together. Now, uh, in this 20th century, 21st century, uh, healing ministry is understood and practiced in a particular way. Uh, we know that in the middle of this pandemic, the meaning of healing ministry is getting prominent to some extent. And at the same time, there are new challenges which are emerging uh, and healing ministry itself is part of Jesus' threefold ministries, preaching, teaching and healing. And 
uh, anything connected to healing. The institutions are normally considered as the healing wing of the church. So it is very uh, integral to the understanding of church, the biblical understanding of uh, Christ's uh, body, and so on. Therefore, uh, we who are in the healing uh, dimension of the church feel part of the whole church in a very intimate way. Now, uh, the healing ministry particularly has different dimensions. Definitely, when there is sickness, suffering, diseases, illnesses, we talk about the ministry of healing. That is one thing. At the same time, there is another one, which is in the midst of conflicts, when there are uh, misunderstandings, even armed conflicts and uh, 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 different kinds of conflicts, how does the healing ministry function as the, the uh, arm of the church? And uh, we know in the sociological dimension, how in the midst of disparities, injustices, uh, how healing ministry is also a relevant one. I would like to touch upon a few things. I, my, my presentation is not a very comprehensive one. On the other hand, I would like to highlight a few aspects from uh, different areas. First one is on the prayer and healing. Uh, this is a, a, an area where many people think uh, if you say a prayer of healing, people will be healed. Uh, of course, in the book of James, we have a strong evidence for that kind of ministry where uh, the apostle tells the people, if anyone is sick, let them pray. The God of healing will heal. Um, but uh, that is not the only dimension of healing ministry as we understand today. Healing can happen even without curing. Therefore, this uh, uh, healing always identified with prayer is not a very comprehensive understanding about healing. Uh, I'm sure all of us are aware of that dimension. Therefore, uh, the, the power of prayer in the dimension of healing, it has to be understood in a broad sense. The second point I would like to highlight uh, is uh, one problem many people would like to uh, take on from some of the uh, some of the biblical passages in the scripture. Uh, that is the connection between the sin and sickness. Many people would like to understand uh, sin and sickness are closely connected, and. Uh, uh, even during this uh, COVID-19 crisis, I heard many sermons preached from many uh, powerful preachers where they very readily connected personal sin to the particular sickness. And uh, if, if we understand the New Testament evidences very closely, there is no... Uh, no evidence to prove that now, out of 37 uh, miracles of Jesus and uh, there are only two instances where sin and sickness are uh, even remotely connected and all other instances Jesus doesn't talk about sin when he was trying to heal uh, so I think there is a lot to talk in that area therefore as uh, biblical students, uh, we, we need to remember uh, the ready connection between sin and sickness has to be uh, dismissed and also uh, it has to be understood in a broader context. The third one I would like to, third comment I would like to make before I uh, go to next is the, the, the issue of healing touch. Well, uh, uh, I would like to uh, share with you a small instance that happened recently. One of our chaplains uh, was approached by a family where one, one child was there and uh, 
it was the beginning weeks of the COVID, and uh, they they came close to her, uh, asking for prayer. Under normal circumstances, she would uh, bring them closely and also touch the child, and then uh, pray. But unfortunately, uh, because of this particular situation, the chaplain also had some anxieties within her. And uh, even the medical community, we are asked not to touch people. So it was a big difficulty for, for her to touch the child. So she shared how guilty she felt not being able to touch uh, from a psychological point of view and from a biblical understanding we know that the touch human physical touch has a power to heal uh, however in this critical situation i think uh, we we are we are pushed to understand the touch from a different angle i don't know what is that angle but we are still struggling to find out what does it mean to to communicate a healing touch to a patient even today there was a there was a call from a, a patient from covid ward and uh, it was a muslim patient she was feeling so much lonely and they wanted prayer under normal circumstances one of the chaplains would have quickly jumped in and went there and touched uh, that person and prayed and so on. But now we are not able to touch. So I, uh, uh, we as chaplains who are in the healing ministry, we are struggling to understand what is the uh, meaning, what is the even metaphorical meaning we can understand today for this word healing touch. Uh, the third dimension, which is very powerful, uh, in healing ministries, the healing sacraments. Uh, I'm sure many of you also would have administered this in the context of uh, uh, illness, in the context of uh, need for reconciliation, in the context of uh, troubles in communities, and so on. Uh, Jesus also originated this uh, sacrament in a very powerful setting where healing was needed and uh, he brought forth healing among the, among the disciples through the sacrament. So uh, today, whether it is a physical illness or a brokenness in the community or some conflict situation, so we have seen the sacraments playing an important key role to bring forth healing. So uh, let, me, let me take few, uh, one more slide on few dimensions of healing ministry uh, today. Little while ago, we were talking too, uh, too many uh, sessions about how do we minister among the people with HIV uh, and AIDS people living with uh, some severe illness, uh, with uh, some of the uh, stigma attached to them and so on. So that is one area, the healing ministry, even today, uh, pays special attention. Of course, today we have to uh, think of this from a, uh, from a COVID perspective, probably. Uh, even before HIV, we had uh, some illness like Hansen's disease uh, where the touch was not possible and even some of the Old Testament uh, scriptures we read uh, distance is needed and so on. So healing ministry in the context where the, uh, there are so many challenges. One area is people living with HIV AIDS. Another area in a country like ours Women health is a major area where uh, it is ignored. So uh, as New Testament uh, students, uh, we have to probably 
take this forward and say how just as men's health is important, how women's health is also important from a biblical point of view also. So the, the other uh, point is in, in recent times, health has been understood in a, mainly from a, uh, an urban perspective. The uh, urban perspective and institutionalized perspective. So uh, there have been many attempts to bring health to the communities. Uh, today, thankfully, the concept of family physician, and these uh, kinds are taking popularity, particularly in the, in the recent pandemic, the community health perspective is taking prominence. So we have to be grateful for that. And the, our, the healing ministry of the church has to embrace that larger dimension and deeper dimension. Yesterday, uh, during Dr. Joseph George's talk, we had a discussion on mental health. That is another area of healing ministry uh, where the scripture has to bring in its foundation. And health of the elderly uh, often in our ethical discussions, bioethical discussions, the uh, uh, age of the people are considered uh, very important and decisions are made based on the age. Now, uh, this particular illness, COVID-19, uh, that, that also has some discrimination against the elderly. Elderly people are easily affected. So how does the church take health of the elderly as our priority? Young people are more um, uh, productive uh, quite often. They bring in a lot of uh, economy on the table. But what is the meaning of togetherness? particularly the elderly. The uh, final point I would like to put here is health of the poor, marginalized and migrants. Uh, sadly, uh, there is less attention to this group. So they, they have challenges from different areas. So uh, as, as the church and also as people who are concerned about the biblical interpretation, I think we have to uh, look at this dimension more closely. I would like to say a few words on the borderless church. I mean, uh, a few months back, there was a huge consultation on this theme in the CSA Synod level also. I'm sure this theme is not a new one uh, from different places. Uh, in our own series, uh, little while ago, I think last week there was some participant who was raising the uh, question, who defines Ecclesia? Who defines Ecclesia? I mean, uh, can the leaders defend the Ecclesia or the congregation members defend the Ecclesia? Or those who believe that they are following Christ define Ecclesia. Now, uh, in the in the scripture, particularly in John chapter 17, we have a beautiful uh, way Ecclesia is defined. Jesus, in his uh, high priestly prayer, he defines Ecclesia as a group of people who are united. He defines Ecclesia as a group of people who, uh, who listen to his voice, obey his voice. Uh, he defines Ecclesia as, uh, as people who are one in, in Christ and united to the Father. So, uh, I think there are so many things we can learn just from that prayer alone. So how do we define Ecclesia? Um, Reverend A.C. Uman, uh, one of the former chapters he used to, talk about uh, this, this center of the church, center of Christianity. Now, many of us pay attention to the borders. In the borders, when we make the border, how do we uh, neglect some people outside the church, include some people inside? 
So we want to keep the border very strong. However, he was telling, how about keep the center very strong, leave the border little loose or less strong. So if we take that kind of approach, I mean, we all know and agree that Christ is the center of Ecclesia and uh, can we leave the border undefined? This is a question which emerges in many groups. Uh, therefore, I think as, as biblical uh, people, we have, to, we have to come up with uh, newer ideas in this area where uh, we are not worried about who is in or out. Rather, we have more concern who is directed towards the center. This is one, one thought I want to say. In this connection, uh, I would like to uh, say a few comments about the Eucharist itself. Uh, sharing Eucharist in a hospital chapel is a challenge. Uh, because people who come for the worship service are not necessarily from Christian faith. So towards the end, when we invite people, okay, uh, those who believe in Jesus Christ, please come and take, participate in this Holy Eucharist. Sometimes, even people from other faiths come and kneel down and do the gestures just like other Christians do there. We have come across many uh, friends who have the symbols of the popular Hinduism, where some uh, some marks are there on the head, uh, they come and put out put out their hands to receive holy. How how do we keep the center defined and border undefined in a context like Eucharist? So I am aware of the fact that Eucharist Jesus wanted this to be at the center of the whole. The ecclesia, however, this has become a dividing point even among us, uh, the so called Christian church. But uh, I would like to take this further to people of other faiths also. Reverend Paul Narayan Rao, uh, who is no more, another chaplain from Bangalore, he, uh, he used to narrate how he became a Christian. He said, first time he received Holy Eucharist when he was a Hindu. That led him to the love of Christ and he became a Christian later on. So, uh, the, the sacrifice of Christ being at the center and uh, the border not being defined. That is one thought I would like to hear. Uh, well, now I would like to quickly, I have two more slides, I will finish on time, I hope, uh, on Biblical spirituality. Um, well, uh, I am not presenting to you uh, some uh, results of some research or anything, but these are based on some of the thoughts, experiences, interactions, and studies uh, I had in the past. Uh, uh, biblical spirituality, what, how do we understand spirituality from a biblical language? Um, this pertains to the question on life. This pertains to the issue of pain. Pain is a reality. Life is a reality. Now, when we go through this reality, how do we make meaning out of reality? Well, many of us are familiar with uh, Victor Frankl's logotherapy. He, he, after going through the severe uh, pain and suffering and torture, later on, he founded that, that sort of one, uh, ministry of healing through logotherapy, bringing meaning into life. 
so biblical spirituality actually is connected to meaning of pain the pain without meaning is very difficult to bear now uh, another dimension of biblical spirituality is connectedness communion with one another mutuality maybe i will talk about the relatedness also here uh, connectedness and relatedness are closely connected uh, but the same in the, almost in the same area for example when you talk to people from palliative care dimension those who are uh, going through last stages of their life they have some condition the illness debilitating illness they know their life is limited in this life if you ask them the points that they bring in are connected to these dimensions so that is spirituality we have uh, many links in the scripture to to understand this um, so they do i say i'm a grateful for what i have i'm a grateful for my people with whom i am connected am i uh, able to relate with my loved ones with ease without any tension without any uh, fear without any bitterness the the last dimension i would like to touch upon is the purpose or the hope only the, the dimension of hope is not there the whole life loses its direction so all these things pain meaning of pain connectedness relatedness and the hope are the dimensions different dimensions of spirituality now you may ask how do we understand this biblical spirituality being reflected in our day to day life uh, apostle paul in his writings he will bring in the, the different dimensions in uh, many of his teachings of course in the in the life of jesus itself in action we we see many of these manifestations happening so powerfully acts of kindness acts of love acts of caring so uh, sometimes we we consider these are very uh, unsophisticated dimensions of life caring the ministry of caring is not very sophisticated you not very complicated it can be done very simply with a lot of love and care and sensitivity that is one manifestation of this biblical spirituality the ministry of listening and presence and the, the another another dimension is even the ability to hand over at the time when time comes handing over at to towards that fundamental values what what i value the most in my life in other people's life in the interaction with the society kind of openness in life these are the manifestations of biblical scripture friends i know i have i just shared some thoughts on the healing ministry the borderless church and biblical spirituality uh, sorry i didn't quote in many new testament passages in the whole thing but i was trying to take the essence of the new testament in the presentation um, i look forward to your your comments and your contributions thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity sir thank you so much sir for this meaning, meaningful and uh, contextual uh, paper since we live in the present context of with the covid 19 and we have lots of issues going on and some of the aspects that you were able to bring it out in the form of healing and uh, sharing your experiences and also reminding us about the the three folds of jesus ministry healing preaching and teaching i think that's very important in the present context that where do we live 
I think that's where uh, your paper, though you were not able to quote, uh, but the essence you brought it to us. I think uh, that is an important uh, aspect that we learned from uh, your paper. Now the floor is open. Any questions, clarifications, comments, you're most welcome. We have around uh, 12 minutes to go. And uh, thank you, sir, for completing it in time so that you are able to give uh, time for the participants to ask questions or uh, clarifications. And now I request the participants, respected guest, if you have any questions, uh, the floor is open. And uh, sir, may I request, we'll take the question one by one and you can note down the questions so yes. that you can respond at the last uh, instead of responding it uh, one by one. Is that okay, sir? Yes, yes, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Now the floor is open and any questions, comments, clarifications, or you want, you want to add so that the sir can take it up and he can apply uh, in his healing ministry where, of course, it's, it's an important, uh, some of us may be involved in uh, teaching, preaching and other aspects, but uh, healing ministry is entirely different uh, and people can misunderstand it uh, and uh, it can be used it in a different way. So now the floor is open, please. Yeah, I see one hand uh, from Andrew Devon Book. Yes, please. And the second, we will take it from uh, Jai Chitra. Yes, uh, please. Thank you, Dr. Arul Das, for this uh, fantastic uh, presentation of healing. Uh, we are so blessed this evening um, of this uh, beautiful talk that you presented. And uh, I also want to thank the organizers of this uh, conference where we are bringing in both uh, practical Christianity and, uh, you know, and the other aspect of it. And then this becomes a practical life of our uh, community of faith. Uh, the, uh, the question that I have for you this evening and for all of us is the, is the, uh, the point of Ecclesia that you brought, brought forth. And uh, when we go back to the New Testament, uh, the word Ecclesia is a, is a political gathering. And it is also uh, a male gathering of privileged male people who have the privilege of uh, voting rights. You know, that's what the word Ecclesia comes from. And this word also comes in uh, conflict with the synagogue, which is gathering. You know, so that's what is happening in the New Testament in the in the in the in the text. Now, how do we make this hierarchical structure? You're talking more on center of gravity and this power structure that we are we are moving around with. How do we make it uh, uh, open to the other gender, namely uh, the sisters in Christ or the female gender? So what is your perspective on this? Because uh, you're basing your, your, uh, your uh, core value on Ecclesia. So how do we negotiate this power structure, which is dominated by male? And even the ritual that you talked about, the sacrament, which is also uh, a power uh, process of uh, handling things where the male clergy is more handling the ritual than the female, cl uh, female uh, clergy. And this has been observed by the outer community of how we are dispensing power among us. And, and can we, how do we negotiate this and how do we make it so that we can be a healing community for the world outside that is broken in this conflict of uh, power dynamics? Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Ravan Devan Nambu. I think that's a valid question. Maybe, sir, we have two more hands from... Uh, yes. Jai Chitra and uh, Father uh, Joy Philip. Uh, maybe can I ask Jai Chitra to share your uh, questions in a brief as the time is limited and we have other uh, participants also. I'm sorry, but... Uh... <laughs> sure, sure. Definitely. In fact, uh, I can ask him privately, but still I thought uh, this would be very uh, good for our discussions. 
uh, you, I mean, many thoughts uh, 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 crossed my mind when you presented this. Um, I'll limit to uh, very short questions. Uh, first of all, when you mentioned about um, 37 miracles uh, which do not have any direct connection with sin, um, how do you look at uh, uh, how do you look at the uh, do not sin anymore. Go and show the authorities in the, uh, in the temple and uh, do an offering uh, for the healing that you received. So how has uh, Jesus' moment understood the relation between uh, sickness and uh, the kind of norms prevalent in those times to uh, ensure that uh, this healing also brings about a holistic uh, kind of uh, clean trick that this person is now healed and in all. So how do we, how does that, I, I want you to highlight how that sin concept is not the real one, but how that um, relationship with temple offerings after healing, all that matters. Secondly, uh, you mentioned about touch has a power, touch has power. Uh, I mean, the whole Reiki alternate uh, medicine uh, uh, gives so much uh, importance to the power of touch in healing. And in the connection, we say all those Jesus touched and uh, those who are touched by Jesus were healed. So uh, I, I would like to uh, hear from you, from your from your medical context, how this uh, healing through the power of touch is relevant today. Uh, thirdly, when you mentioned about uh, pain, I really like the way when you say pain without meaning is difficult to bear. I mean, uh, women's labor pain is the most uh, painful thing in the world and the kind of power, mental stamina needed to bear the labor pain. So, I mean, suddenly it clicked to me. Of course, I had a cesarean ace ago, but only because of the purpose behind bringing a child into this life that pain is borne by women when they go through. So, I mean, that's an amazing thought. I, of course, I have two more, but I'll leave it at this point. Yeah, thank you, Jay Chitra. I think uh, many of us will have a questions and clarifications. Maybe the, you can put them in the chat board that can be taken to Dr. Arudas later on and he can maybe answer it when during his free time or something. I saw the third hand from Father Jai Philip. Sir, can you make it a little uh, short sure, and sweet? Sure, sure, sure. I'll try to be <laughs> brief. So first of all, uh, Thank and congratulations for this wonderful paper, especially coming from the field. So existential context is reflected in the paper. That's a good thing. One point I just want to appreciate, which just struck me, is a healing can cap happen without curing. Maybe a point which needs to be analyzed further. Because sometimes we are trying to equate healing and curing. And uh, there is also a problem with that one. Sometimes the miracles all those uh, fancy miracle uh, working that is happening everywhere, maybe having this to do with. And the second one also already uh, previous, uh, you know, uh, she, she mentioned about that one actually. Uh, there, I see so many people, especially towards the end of their life, struggle a lot because they uh, find it difficult to identify a meaning for their pain. So probably an area where church can do enormous, maybe healing ministries actually help people to find a meaning for their suffering. Labor pain, of course, easy to understand. But at the same time, there are other type of pain, especially people, those who may not be having deep faith, etc. They suffer a lot because they fail to identify a meaning. Of course, regarding that question on the meaning of Ecclesia having a political overturn in the New Testament, However, I think in the uh, we have to take into consideration a hermeneutical key because the tradition further developed to give other meanings to Ecclesia. So, of course, originally probably in the Greek uh, world it has a political connotation, but down through the centuries Ecclesia 
as assumed other implications. So we have to club all of them together. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, it's a me. It's very appropriate uh, for us, and we know that you are bringing us that prayer and healing, or healing and curing, are different. Uh, maybe that can be explained uh, later on by Dr. Ramdas, sir. Can you answer the questions raised by the participants or uh, the platform uh, the, from the floor? And the other questions, maybe we can take it up in a personal and it can be responded through email or in your uh, personal level, sir. Please, sir. Thank you, Dr. Subramani. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, say thank you for your questions and, and contributions. Yeah, I consider uh, that we are, we are together in finding answer if at all we can now uh, for some of these questions now the first uh, uh, question by the andrew uh, regarding the how to negotiate the male power and the dominant power and uh, how to distance from it when we understand this ecclesia particularly uh, uh, we are uh, i'm saying the center is important when I, when I mean center is important, what I meant was the, the Christ event. Christ event has the important thing in the church, whereby Christ, whatever Christ stood for, that becomes the center of our gathering. Uh, definitely, it is not about power. Uh, very specifically, if you look at the Johannine description of centrality of Christ, it is all about uh, the, the suffering. It's all about uh, being crucified and then receiving glory. So therefore, the centrality of Christ being the center of uh, Ecclesia, uh, that's what I particularly meant uh, uh, when I said. Uh, so therefore, we cannot hold the other power dynamics when we are holding this dynamics of Christ event as a central thing for the church. That is one point. Uh, Dr. Jaychitra's uh, comment about the uh, uh, sin, uh, thank you for that. I, I think one point uh, I wanted to share is there are two events very specifically sin and the sickness are connected in, in the conversations or narratives of Jesus. Uh, one was uh, Mark chapter 2 and another one John chapter 8 uh, where uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus said your, your sins are forgiven, then he said, uh, therefore, you get up and walk. And then in John chapter 8, it is on the negative side. Jesus said, who sinned? Uh, disciples asked, who sinned? Jesus said, no, neither him nor his, uh, for, the, for the glory of God to be revealed. Now, uh, you, you have added another dimension to the question. How is it connected to the relationship with the temple when the healed person has to show himself in the temple? What is what is the dynamics there? Uh, how do we understand Jesus' movement, understanding this relationship? Uh, so my, my first point is Jesus, through his interactions and through his actions of healing, uh, try to disconnect the link. That's what I would like to claim. Because uh, out of uh, all the healing miracles, only two, two places, and another one place is uh, go and sin no more. And two places he is talking um, on a positive side, one place where he is talking in a negative side, connections. And all other miracles, healing miracles, were done as it is needed. The, therefore, I would like to claim that uh, it is not a dominant thought in him to connect sin and sickness. Therefore, if today, if we are connecting it, it is, uh, it is contrary to Jesus' original thought. That is one thing. Now, uh, the touch, uh, how important it is, definitely it is in our day-to-day our day -day, experience we feel it we we experience it i mean i i would like to claim here again that there is much to life than what experiment 
observation and our inference can come to. Uh, there are many things which happen cannot be quantified in a scientific way. Uh, therefore, th there is sufficient place for that kind of exper experience even in the New Testament. That is very interesting. Therefore, as uh, people of uh, Christ movement, we can very easily gel with that idea. Uh, this the power of touch as healing in fact. Uh, sorry, I can't say many examples now. The, the, uh, the Another comment by Father Joy Philip. Thank you for that comment. The, Cure, the distinction between the cure and 